RMBL was founded in 1928. It was on, founded on an abandoned mining town. We're surrounded by public lands and have built approximately 45,000 square feet of space, 70 buildings. Some of the buildings date back to 1880. Some of them are more modern scientific structures. The research going on at RMBL is internationally recognized. The educational opportunities that RMBL provides are internationally recognized. Anyone who's anyone in ecology and evolutionary biology, many, many of these people have been to RMBL in some capacity during their career. It's never been more important to help educate the next cohort of people that are going to give us the tools to understand ecological processes and evolutionary processes. And RMBL is a place where this education and research combines to create a potent and very effective mix that allows us to better understand the world around us. RMBL hosts one of the largest annual gatherings of field biologists in the world. It's what I refer to as the annual migration of scientists. They flock here year after year. Having so many scientists makes it a very exciting environment, very dynamic. Scientists get to exchange ideas. They talk with each other. That informs their science. They come up with new interesting questions. They work more efficiently as scientists. There's all kinds of opportunities for informal interactions. You can go in the dining hall and talk to somebody who's on the National Academy of Sciences. I remember that as a student thinking, whoa, I'm in the dining hall and I'm talking to Paul Ehrlich. You know, this is really cool. This is 51 years. What brought me here is that uh, this is a magnificent place to work on the kind of organisms I want to work on without having to travel a long distance to get to field sites. Uh, it has since evolved into the finest terrestrial field station in the world doing, I think, the most important biological work in the world. I bring students from urban environments, from UCLA. I bring students from all over the world. And some of these guys have never been outside before. So their eyes are completely opened into what's possible and what's going on around them. And in addition to doing cutting edge science and helping out with long-term research, they're also learning to climb mountains and explore the spectacular valley. Here they're fully immersed and they often get turned on to academia and to, to, this, to the concept of discovery because they meet other normal people who are just jazzed about uh, learning and, and learning how the world works. Uh, and you know, that can be geeky in other settings. Here it's just the normal thing and suddenly they find themselves. They find themselves and they find a seriousness they didn't have as, as, as uh, undergraduate students. Uh, they're completely turned on and, they, and they, their lives take off and I've watched that transformation many times during the summer. There's nothing better than science. You get to meet cool people, you get to do cool things in cool places. So I think it's, it's one of the best experiences in my life. Hello, how are you? The Rocky Mountain Biological Lab is a place that re uh, respects and worships long-term research and facilitates um, long-term research. Well, one of the tremendous values of working at a field station like the Rocky Mountain Biological Lab is the, the history of data that are available. And I'm, I'm glad that I'm able to help contribute to that with some of my long-term work that's been going on since, uh, some of these studies now since 1973. Long-term studies are very important because of the insights that they give us. And those studies often have to be long-term because of how slowly the answers come. So I have this 35, 36 year data set that, that needs to be perpetuated. And I'll do it, you know, until they have to helicopter me up to the <laughs> highest sites which are in the wilderness. And, and hopefully when I can't do it anymore, my academic, uh, children and grandchildren will, will take it over because it's a phenomenally valuable data set. It may be one of the longest running records of aquatic insect uh, uh, communities that exist in the world. RMBL has been a magnet for people who turn out to be very important in terms of national policy and national research. We've had uh, at least three members of the National Academy work here. I think there's some good examples of how the work at RMBL has not only local significance, but regional and, uh, and national and even international significance. Aspects of the Clean Air Act uh, were derived from work or from understanding that came from work that was being done here at RMBL. So we have a tremendous uh, impact both in terms of the science and in terms of uh, policy.
I, I do get asked by my friends from time to time, uh, what is it they're, they're doing up there that, that means anything to me? I mean, what, what, how, what, how is that science translated? And uh, I, I can repeat what I heard Paul Ehrlich say last year, that uh, the only people that should be concerned about what we're doing are people like to eat, uh, uh, breathe fresh air, and drink clean water. It's really exciting now how the lab is reaching out to the whole world and getting the kind of response that we are, like photos in the New York Times, the cover of Nature magazine. The world has found out, and certainly the Gunnison Valley now has found out, that they have a world-class operation right up the hill. RMBL is a way of life, and RMBL is a community and is a family of people who have a common goal, and that is to uh, learn to understand these high altitude ecosystems and also to provide that understanding as a basis for increasing the quality of life not only for people who live in this valley, but also for people of the world. And that's why RMBL is the premier biological field station in the world. Mm -hmm.